I started teaching in Palo Alto High School actually 30 years ago. And I've been teaching there, and I actually have been teaching there more than I ever thought I would, primarily because I could have retired years ago, but in fact, I love teaching. I love working with students. I love being there every day. I love those teenagers that most of you guys want to get out of the house immediately. I love being with them. Their energy is incredible. They are thinking outside the box all the time, and they have the best sense of humor. That is, if you could laugh at their jokes, which I do. So this is me together with editors from last year, and um, just a random picture that I just found. So I want to tell you just a little bit about um, Palo Alto High School. So this is Palo Alto High School when I came 30 years ago. This is what it looked like. And here is Palo Alto High School today. Looks pretty much the same. Not has changed a lot. Nothing's really changed on the exterior. What's changed is on the interior. So <laughs> this is what I used to use when I first came to Palo Alto High School. Yes, a typewriter. And I, since I was teaching journalism, basically what happened is my students typed up their stories and actually not everybody even knew how to type, so sometimes they had to handwrite their stories and we'd hire somebody to type it. And then, can you believe this? I handed out X-Acto blades to everybody in class. And they would cut out their story and then they would paste it up with wax on a pasteboard and then we would send the paper in. The paper was only about six to eight pages long. So then, revolution happened. 1980, uh, yeah, 1987, what happened was that I wrote a grant to the state. Never thought I would get it, but I don't know, something happened and I got this grant, and as a result, I got eight computers. They were delivered to the back of my classroom, and then gigantic boxes. And then I thought, oh my God, now what am I gonna do? I mean, these boxes, and all I know how to do is open the box. <laughs> so. I didn't know, I couldn't tell you know, my department chair, I didn't know what I was doing. I couldn't tell anybody I didn't know what I was doing. So I decided that I was gonna tell the people that actually I was closest to, and that was my students. I told them I had no idea what I was doing. And in fact, they turned out, it was a very important moment for me, they turned out to be my collaborators. They were the ones who helped. They came in after school, we came on the weekends, we learned how to use the computers together, I learned how to network, I was crawling under tables, I learned all the software, I learned it from them. They were my collaborators, we learned together. So here it is today, Palo Alto High School. I now have uh, labs with 100 computers, and I now have the program when I first started, had 19 kids in the program, and today we have almost 570 kids taking this program. So, however, we have, do have one major change here in America today. Okay, the program looks, uh, the school looks like this, pretty much the same on the outside, but it's not the same on the inside. So today we have a problem because America does not trust its teachers. We have high stakes testing, which is really a test of the teachers. No Child Left Behind has basically asked us to do that, and it's been followed up by Race to the Top. You need to control the teachers. You need to make sure that they're teaching the right thing. So what we do now is we tie teacher scores, teacher um, salary to test scores. These are headlines from around the country, and this is what happened. In Atlanta, Atlanta is not the only place it happened. It's happened all over the country. So we have all these teachers and these administrators, they're all cheating, and why are they cheating? Because it's so crazy, in No Child Left Behind, what happened is if you failed, you lost your funding. Does that make sense? It's so, so crazy, you know, you'd think they would give them more funding to try to help them, but you lost their funding. So this was the motivation to try to, you know, see whether or not, um, you know, I guess make people fail or, I don't know what their, their motivation was here. So one of the major problems is there's a lack of trust and respect for teachers, and that filters into the classroom today. So teachers, in turn, do not trust their students. So administrators don't trust the teachers, teachers don't trust the students, parents don't trust, no one's trusting anybody. So in addition, I don't know how many of you know about this, we have scripted teaching. Scripted teaching is basically a lack of trust. 
In September, you're given the textbook, you're given the tests, you're told how fast to teach. On October 3rd, you're supposed to be on this page. On November 4th, you're supposed to be on this page. It's happening right here in San Jose, California. It's happening all over Santa Clara County. Scripted teaching, telling the teacher what to do. Lecture is the primary method. It's just the opposite of what we heard here, open study. It's just the opposite. It's like the teacher lectures and you follow. Scripted teaching does not produce critical thinkers. Scripted teaching cuts creativity. Test, test, test. So the demand for skills in the world today has changed. We have a very different skills demand. What we're looking for is non-routine, interactive people who can actually think. So if you see the blue line over there, that's 1900. That was low-skilled jobs. That's what we needed. Here we are in 2000. We need knowledge work jobs. 2012, we even need more knowledge work jobs. But are we training them? Do you think scripted teaching actually produces this type of a student? America needs workers that are, have the ability to communicate, adapt easily to change, work in teams, problem solve, analyze and conceptualize, reflect on and improve import performance, manage oneself, create, innovate, and criticize, and learn new things at all times. This is also part of the core standards for the country. So you have to ask, are we achieving our goals with the type of teaching that is going on in the schools today? The challenge today is to make motivated, self-reliant citizens. How can we produce motivated and self-reliant citizens? We need effective teaching, creative, innovative, exciting, collaborative, trusting. So here's an example of my classroom, and this is one of the things that I do. I promote independence. You see those two kids sitting on the stools? They are in charge. I am in the corner taking a picture. I encourage discovery. We use computers all the time for all of our discovery. That you need to know something? Help each other. Work collaboratively. Work in teams. Everything is project-based. So today we have, at Palo Alto High School, those over 500 kids. We have one newspaper, three magazines, two broadcast journalism programs, and an online journalism program. That's where all the kids are taking. They, have, they get to elect a program and then actually be part of it. I respect students' own ideas. You know, they come up with some of the best ideas, better than mine. You know, just because I'm older doesn't mean I have better ideas. Teacher acts as a facilitator. Today, teachers should act as a facilitator. Facilitate learning. If I don't know it, let me facilitate it. Let me show you how you can get it. I promote a sense of community. Notice my students are not sitting in rows. I encourage intellectual risk-taking. It's OK to fail. I do not teach to the test. Never. These, by the way, are all my students in the program. I have high standards. I help them achieve those standards. I promote group work. I put my students in charge, and I support them. I teach search. Everybody has computers. Everybody has um, smartphones. Let them use those intelligently. The key is trusting students and giving them responsibility. And scripted ed ed teaching does not do that. Nobody is being trusted. So giving them the freedom to fail. Through schooling, we stigmatize mistakes. They're all afraid to fail. Everybody, they're afraid to get a C. I have parents who call me because their kid's getting a B in my class. By the time they graduate, they're really good at memorizing, but they're really bad at thinking. They're great at taking those multiple choice tests. We're educating kids for a future we cannot predict. We need to teach them to think, to find information for themselves, not to memorize useless facts. They're really interested in learning. They've all got these phones that they use all the time. So here's one thing, and this is part of the open study that we just heard about, open educational resources. I just wonder how many people in this room have ever heard of open educational resources. Would you just raise your hand if you've ever heard of it? Nobody. One, two, a few. Let me tell you, 
Go home and look it up. Open educational resources, there are millions all over the web. MIT OpenCourseWare, celebrating 10 years, 10 years of open courses. You can take any course at MIT for free online. This is Udacity, just out of Stanford University. Look at all the courses they have, free online university courses to every, for everyone. Open Culture, 450 free online courses from top universities. So this is all powered by Creative Commons. Creative Commons is a licensing structure that allows you to share copyright, your copyrighted work, and put a pre-authorized license on it. So it says, yes, you can use my work, just give me credit. And we have six, uh, five other um, constraints in case you want to do something slightly different. You can go to the website and check it out. We have open education video competition right now. Um, people were looking for entries, $25,000 award for that. And so it's a possibility. Learning communities are building up on the outside of school. Students want to learn, just like you saw in the previous talk. Khan Academy, I hope lots of people have heard about Khan Academy. Yes. Khan Academy, supported by Creative Commons licenses. Here's Peer-to-Peer -peer University, learn, learn anything with your peers. It's online, totally free. Here is University of the People, Free tuition, online, again, sharing. Open learning teaches us what's possible when students have independence and trust. But it's not a solution itself. We need to change the culture in America so that trust is an essential part of training for all teachers. Stop uh, monitoring. We don't want teachers that are policemen in the classroom, which is basically a lot of what's happening. Exa here's some examples from students who are empowered. Journalism is the number one project-based learning, but there's lots of other ones out there as well. This is work that my students have done. This is the Campanile. Uh, that's the student newspaper, comes out every two to three weeks. This is about, it's 26 pages now. I started, it was only six to eight. This is the lifestyle section. This is just a spread that they've done. We also have a magazine. This is Viking, 80 pages, sports magazine. We take pictures and report on all the school sports. This is another one of Vikings covers. They have a website because they thought their information wasn't getting out fast enough. They wanted to make sure you knew who won. Um, this is Verde, this is a news magazine, and it comes out again every, this has every six weeks. Um, this is all designed by students. The ideas are all student ideas. They're not my ideas. This is Pally Voice, this is our website, and this is Jeremy Lin, who is also a student in the program. Um, this is another one of the Pally Voice websites. Uh, you can go online, find it anytime, 24-7. We do the broadcast journalism program, television. We broadcast to the school every day. These are kids in the broadcast. We won this year four gold crowns, top of the nation, 2012. Most schools don't get any crowns, and it was the first time in our history that we've gotten four. So America needs to engage its students, not threaten them. Cut the scripted teaching. Bring open education, the kind of collaborative education, into the classroom. We can't get rid of all these schools. We have them. We need to use the schools that we have, and we need to change the culture in the classroom. We need to provide project-based learning opportunities for all, in all subject areas. That doesn't mean all day long you're doing project-based. It just means, how about an hour a day? Or maybe two hours a day? How about giving people an opportunity to make their learning meaningful? Change the high-stakes testing so it's not punitive. Empower students by trusting them with responsibility. I mean, all those newspapers you saw, those magazines, kids come up with their own stuff. We trust them. Trusting students empowers them to believe in their dreams. Just look at all these dreams that have changed our world. These were all young people. We need to change the culture here. My idea for paying it forward is can we trust our students? Can we make a difference? Can we improve the future of American education? Thank you.